Hi everyone. So wait, let me start from the beginning. I'm Maxime and uh, yeah, I work in, Mar in Marseille, but I'm from Brussels originally, so I'm happy to be with you virtually. Um, I'll talk about inferring cell cycle phases from a temporal network of protein infection. So let's get to it. Uh, what is the cell cycle? It's basically the a succession of protein infractions that will lead to the cell division. So the important thing for us is that basically it's four main physiological phases, so G1, S, G2, M. And inside each of those, there's several subphases and processes. And the important thing is that there's, these interactions are ordered in time and they must happen in certain given order. So that's why then, so first we focus on budding yeast and that's why then we model it as a temporal network to take this temporal information in, into account. So this is my network here, and you can see that there's edges with shades of red. And for those that have temporal information, for example, I'm giving a few examples here. Um, and for the gray ones, unfortunately, I don't have I don't have temporal information. So I only have a partially temporal network. And we will see that we can still do some things with this. So what we do is basically we want to infer biological phases, and to do that we use different the, the snapshots so we have a temporal network which is a list of snapshots so each snapshot is like an instantaneous adjacency matrix and we use these as data points and we cluster them and so basically we cluster time points if you wish so we compute for example here distant uh, distances between these snapshots and then we apply higher hierarchical clustering and then we get clusters that are shown here in colors right and that correspond to timings and you can already see that, for example, here we find five clusters. We find, we can detect very well, for example, with this red cluster, the, the G1 phase, with this purple cluster, the S phase, etc. And so already that's, that's quite, quite nice. So then we, we go on. We want to next explore a, a range of time scales, right? Because with just a number, a fixed number of clusters, we, we cannot. So here we, we compute different numbers of clusters and we can see that basically we, it's like changing the time resolution, right? And we can then detect subphases of inside of each of these phases. And that's very good to explore because we know that many systems, uh, complex systems have a multi-scale dynamics. So that's a good point. And the clustering is checked to be good at these different time scales. Um, there's many more important and interesting questions. One of them, for example, we can explore uh, the features and the peculiarities of having a partially temporal, temporal network. One of the questions is how much temporal data do we need to do this? And the answer is really not much. I made a really quite a lot of tests. One of them was uh, keeping only a few temporal edges um, attached to a single node and to basically set to constant all the other temporal edges. So, for, and then I was able to recover for, depending on which edges, of course, uh, with only really sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes eight temporal edges, uh, very well the five clusters and in different numbers of clusters. For example, I'm showing here the, the case with the CDC28, for which it's expected because it's quite a central uh, protein. But there's other cases. Um, and so there's, there's lots of questions about this uh, that I investigate more, but we, I cannot show you all the details. But uh, if, we, if we can predict which edges will be more temporally central or which nodes, etc. So we're coming to the end. Um, there's many more things I cannot uh, tell you everything in five minutes. For example, that we check the inference is robust against changes in the clustering, in the distance metrics. Uh, there's, interesting questions about which nodes are more temporally central than others, effect of sampling frequency of the data, different types of data. An important thing is that all the code will be avail available quite soon as a Python package and uh, notebooks. So the idea is really, uh, we'd be very happy if people used it on their data, you can use it on, on your data, it's gonna be hopefully simple to use. And uh, yeah. As a conclusion, we infer biological phases on the cell cycle from a temporal network. And uh, yeah, th this, is, this, this is the case that timing of interactions is very important in many, many different biological networks. 
uh, we don't always have temporal information about all the interactions, but still we can we can apply this, and so we believe it can be applied to many biological systems, and we we hope it's going to be done. Uh, the, there is a manuscript in preparation, and for my last 10 seconds, um, there's just, I think, two other contributions on this topic I like, and that will be of interest to some of you, so recent contributions on higher order interaction networks and synchronization. So this big review, and then this other paper. And that's it. Thanks a lot. I will shut now the, if I manage. <laughs>